was acting that was normal, yes? Hey, slow down you. Hello! Slow down you. In his kitchen, Gordon Ramsay knows only one way to run the show. What are you doing, Darren? Darren, what are you doing, please? Don't fucking start. OK, Darren? Why don't you send the ravioli first? Why don't you send the ravioli first? Darren, food was on the pass, you disappeared again. Why? Sorry? You thought we had 10 seconds? Yeah? I didn't think so, you know that. The notion of self-restraint mm -hmm. isn't something that comes easily to Gordon. Service to Pato. But he's been hired to run a banquet on the eve of the World Cup final, and he'll have to be on his best behaviour. He's wanted for his culinary prowess, rather than his take-no-prisoners management style. Well, when we're discussing lunchtime, what were we talking about lunchtime? What were we discussing? Automatically standing in front of the trays without being fucking told every goddamn day. Today, Gordon is on his way to Paris to finalise plans for the banquet he's being paid £25,000 to oversee. I suppose one of the most exciting dinners I've ever actually cooked for in my entire life is on the eve of the World Cup final. It's going to be for about 1,000, between 800 and 1,000 people. It's going to be taking place at Versailles, the Palais de Versailles. Thinking about it now, three and a half, four weeks before the dinner, you know, I'm now starting to get nervous because we, we've been working on it for the last six months. <clears throat> I've been to Paris on five or six occasions and uh, you know, it's, it's got to be right. It's a thousand pound a head. Uh, it's a big dinner. Mastercard are the sponsors. They're paying for everything. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. The historic Palace of Versailles. Ramsay has arrived for a site inspection with the banquet's PR man, Richard Waddington. <laughs> what a door. Wow. Those, those doors go back a few years. Yeah, uh, imagine. It's beautiful. Yeah. Welcome it to the orangery at Versailles. It's lovely. It's staggering, isn't it? It is absolutely stunning. All these lights work on the side, do they? Yes, yeah. they all do. Yeah, but on, on the evening, we'll have up lighting. We're, we're, bring, we're going to bring a load of the trees in from outside. Ready? So the whole thing is that the whole of this room becomes like an enchanted garden. So as you can see, you have no kitchen. <laughs> no, everything has to be brought out. So the great thing here is that, I mean, this is the kitchen, and all of this comes out, the tractor as well, and, you know, factory kitchens brought in, built yeah. on site, Ovens. the whole thing. And the most surprising thing, of course, is no gas. No, absolutely no, not allowed no gas. To use it. Why? Just Health and safety self and fire. Yeah. We wouldn't want to burn Versailles down, it's been here a few years. No, but I mean... No fire, <laughs> no, nothing to do with fire is allowed. Really? So, I mean, we're all on electric convection ovens? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hot cars? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get one hit, one hit at this, get yeah. it right, and we're heroes, get it wrong, and we're out of a job. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm through the back door. <laughs> You're through the back door. <laughs> I found my underground tunnel. I wanted someone young, enthusiastic and passionate, and, you know, like myself, Ramsey, melts the pot, should we say? I mean, Gordon is that sort of person. But on this trip to Paris, Ramsay has an ulterior motive. The World Cup banquet may be three weeks away, but today's the opening game. Gordon has come to see his native Scotland face the boys from Brazil. The match is a poignant reminder of Ramsay's past. At the age of 19, he was a promising defender on the brink of signing with Glasgow Rangers. But his boyhood dreams were crushed when the manager decided he just wasn't good enough. So I started preparing myself to think, you know, what I'm going to tell my mates. They think I'm here because I'm signing a professional contract. 19 years of age, very fast, uh, naturally left-footed. And, uh, you know, Rangers is my career. I didn't cry, certainly not in front of anyone. Yeah. Then I gave up. I didn't play football for two years. Collins! 
If he couldn't make it to the top at football, then it had to be the Premier League of cooking. He became an apprentice player under Marco Pierre White. Then I found myself in a situation where it was all or nothing. Shit, this is a great job. Brilliant chef to work for. If you're going to do this, do it properly and get to the very top. And I suppose that's what really gave me the kick up the arse. And the Stade de France, it finishes. The world champions, Brazil 2, Scotland 1. This may compensate my feelings had I made it as a footballer. The fact that I could be representing Scotland. I'm now representing Great Britain as the only chef cooking a serious dinner on the eve of the World Cup final. And the way it's going, it looks like Scotland will be returning way before the dinner. Seven, come on, Owen, Owen. Yes, Let's not fuck around here, yeah? Owen, yeah? Rouge in the pan. Back in London, Gordon is fine-tuning the dishes he's devised for the banquet's five-course menu. Today, it's the main course, cannon of spring lamb. But as the banquet approaches, so do the jitters. Uh, this banquet's costing a thousand pound a head. Uh, you know, how many of those people will really want to see it done properly? I think, personally, 90% of them. It's getting closer by the day. As not a day goes by now that I don't think about that particular night. And, you know, it's, uh, it's getting more worrying. One thing I'm worried about is the temperature of the lamb, getting that lamb beautifully sealed, capturing those you know, juices inside, having the lamb served pink. I've never cooked on electric stoves. In fact, I have. I cooked on once uh, electric stoves on a boat, and that was a nightmare. And uh, my dream, of course, is to get it looking like this. I very much doubt it, and I'm sure there's going to be a few casualties along the way, but at the end of the day, as long as Richard Waddington stays out of the kitchen, we'll be fine. <laughs> OK, slicing the lamb. Uh, one thing that's pissed me off about Versailles is the fact that we're actually serving this whole, but here we're going to size it nice and thin. Placed on top of the spinach, keeping the lamb focused into the centre of the plate, like so. As you can see, the lamb is nice and pink, so nicely glazed over the lamb. And then our final garnish, we'll position our courgette flowers, like so. And on the night, if it's as good as that, then I'm going to be a happy boy. It's not just the food troubling Ramsay. It's also the prospect of a battalion of unfamiliar chefs and an army of discerning diners. It all induces a rare but fleeting moment of self-doubt. What control can one individual have? They can have an influence, but, you know, how the hell can I control 650 covers through my hands? I've learned that's impossible. I've found that hard to accept. Uh, but I can't give up. I'll control it as much as I can within my grasp. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's my, my, my show, my dinner, I'll dictate, and uh, they've got to follow. 7 a.m. at Ramsey's home in South London. Thank you. Thank you, Valen. Gordon's enlisted two of his staff as backup for the banquet. His maitre d' Jean-Claude has arrived, but there's no sign of his head chef, Marcus. Trains at 7.54. Yeah, so we have to be at 7.30. Oh, sweetie. She looks just like her father. Yeah, Jean-Claude's here. Everybody's here waiting for you, Marcus. <laughs> Ramsay and Jean-Claude decide to go on ahead. What is that? What do we do? Do we stay here? Or miss the train or away? They're ten minutes away from missing their train and there's still no sign of Marcus. Stand it up again. Yeah. 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 He tells he's got his eyes and stuff together. I know, I know. They look like smarties. At last the team's complete, but it seems they're destined not to leave London. We've been standing outside for the last four minutes, waiting, trying to get through. The 7.54 to Paris is now departing. That's because we're late. No, no, sure, I mean... That's what I was trying to get to your attention today, excuse me, I know, mind, because it's not we're late, it's the fact that the machine is broken. That's fine, but the thing is that people can't do it, so... I no, appreciate that. Well, I'm not going to miss Jay through the fair, Mike. No, if you come back with me now, we're going to go to the... Oh, my mia. <laughs>
The comedy of errors doesn't bode well for the banquet. The eve of the World Cup final, the big day has arrived. Yeah, if you can show them how we want them placed on the plates, yeah? The hardest dish is, of course, the first two, the foie gras and the sea bass. The, the lamb is going to be a lot easier because it's plated, it's on a silver flat. OK. So the most difficult and the most time we need is for the first two courses. <laughs> I have concerns. I mean, yeah, we have we have 650 people sitting down for dinner, um, being catered from two kitchens, which are two sides of a central courtyard um, that can't see each other, and the only way of communicating is, is through a radio. I mean, it's one hell of a challenge. Rain. I really do not want it to rain. If it rains tonight, it's. You know, it just, it, it'll put the dampers on everything. Got my lucky trousers on, black trousers. Good luck trousers. Very rare I wear black trousers. I normally wear sort of blue and white check, but these are these are lucky trousers. Why? Because I met my girlfriend. I met my wife in these trousers. And uh, I knew the minute I met her, I was on my bike and I took her out for the day. So I called them my lucky trousers. A bit weird, but... Just four hours to go before the 650 guests arrive for an enchanted evening at the Palace of Versailles. Uh, why don't they wear blue aprons in France? Because uh, we don't like colours. We don't like blue? We don't like blue. Huh? We don't like blue. Oh, fuck. In the kitchen, Entente is less than cordial between Gordon and Roy James, head chef of the Parisian outside caterers. This is what we suggested and this is what we spoke fine. about. Yeah, but Roy, we want to back start. I don't like coming back here and you in the kitchen trying yeah, to fuck us because we're no, going to talk to Jack. Nobody's fucking anybody. No, okay, We've got to get it right because one person's doing one thing and another person's doing another thing. No, no, Roy, you're running behind yeah. each other. You must go to the street. Yeah. Well, we, we talked about it before and we talked about it yeah, but just Roy, before. there's no need to act like a fucking woman over there. No, no, no. We're going to stay together. No, no, no. He's only checking. You're telling me I'm going over there changing it. He's fucking checking to make sure we know what we're doing. Check That's it. all. Right. Before, before we But if he's got a concern, he's got to speak his fucking concern. He can't just keep it a bottle up inside. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. Roy's panicking. Like a wet fart running along Blackpool Promenade. What's the point in uh, getting excited about it now? Yeah? Let's wait till the curtains go up in service when it's necessary. Not now. Monsieur, please. The final touches are being made to the banquet's first course, but somebody's over seasoned the foie gras. Ramsay's just about controlling his temper. Déjà on season the foie gras. Yeah, pardon. It's going to be too fucking salty. The guests have arrived at the palace and they're expecting a night of gastronomic splendor. If you wish to, over. Marcus has been briefed to keep a tight rein on the French chefs. It might help if he spoke the language. The tension's a bit, uh, it's getting a bit high at the moment. Uh, he seems to be running around, he's very confused and seems to be sort of panicking quite a lot. It's difficult to control, very, very difficult to control. Outside, the weather is also taking a turn for the worse.
drinks on the terrace are hastily abandoned. Okay, what time uh, do you want the plates? Sorry? What time do you want the plates? Uh, I don't know, I'll tie up here. I want to know what time you want to take the plate. Yeah. You will then, at the end of your speech, you will say, and now I introduce spring. With the guests inside, dinner needs to be served a little earlier, but no one seems to know quite when. I will announce dinner at 25 past 8 over, which will take us 10 minutes, 15 minutes to sit down, and then we go straight to the speech dinner. Don't fucking work. All these fucking walkie-talkies. I mean, I've, you know, it's it's like something out of fucking Glastonbury Festival, Top of the Pops. I mean, it's embarrassing. With all the microphones out on there, I feel like Mike Jig at the Jagger. In the meanwhile, we are privileged to have two former world champions with us here tonight. Pele. He was stre stressing on the timing. It's going to be uh, 15 nice. minutes. Yeah, I know. Well, he said that 10 minutes ago. Hey, hey, hey. And on top of that, they said that he's going to be pushed a little bit more Early. advanced than late. All right. And Sir Bobby Charlton. Sang. Sang, voilà. Bien. Arrêtez, arrêtez, arrêtez là. Shh, arrêtez, arrêtez. Patrick Didlot, il attend et il fait, il bloque les maîtres d'hôtel à l'entrée du, du S. Jean-Claude Richard, over. I, I am here with the chef. Gordon. This is the cause of the delay. The food can't be served until announced by these performers, and they're not nearly green enough yet. It's a French thing. This is the best part of the day. This is action. Allez, comment on va passer les assiettes Non Je ne sais pas, c'est juste pris un peu trop longtemps que ça devrait. Finally transformed, the insect lady appears. But the foie gras has been held up for 15 minutes. Waiting for the performing insects has had a knock-on effect on the second course. The sea bass has been in the oven too long. What a fucking nightmare. I told him to hold back on the sea bass. The sea bass went in and consequently is overcooked, so fuck me. You can see why I'm not a fucking banqueting chef and I want to get back to my 14 table dining room on the 8.30 train tomorrow morning. Standards are everything to Gordon, and tonight he's fallen short. Do you know what the delay was? What? It was the, the cockroaches. They all went out late, and so they waited for them. And they waited and waited. That was why it was all late. These things weren't ready. So we fucked everything because of the cockroach? Yeah. Sea bass was brown, brown. Nothing you can do. Brown, brown. Crispy skin? No. While the lamb is in better shape, it doesn't look nearly as appetising as the dish prepared by Gordon back in London. Hello? Hello? Pardon, hello. Vas-y, là. 10, c'est ça, 10. Ça vient, doucement, doucement. Les sorciers en face, là, pour le jus, là. 
Non, non, c'est bon, c'est tout ce qu'on a là. Et les... Voilà, encore un tour. De demain et Aubergine. Merci. shock 99.9% of the people here tonight if you told them that it was cooked by an English chef they, as they assume that it's French which it's a real plus that was appalling that was appalling someone offered me 50 grand for the next dinner I still wouldn't do it uh, I think to how many times I give Darren a bollocking because he can't even cut the sea bass straight and he cooks it to perfection but he can't even cut it straight and here we sent out 357 300 in Marcus's kitchen, all overcooked, because we're waiting for a goddamn cockroach to get dressed before he ran into the dining room. Uh, what's the most important? For me, I, you know, sod the cockroaches, <laughs> stick them out in the garden, serve the food first. The chef should be very happy, Is nothing to be ashamed of. He's truly covered himself in glory this evening. The food were perfect. The lamb wasn't too bad, uh, but the sea bass was embarrassing. All I can say is thank God I haven't got the Michelin guy sat in here on a table of ten inspecting me for my third Michelin star. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd get my ass caned. <laughs> The grand finale to the evening is a firework display, which comes to a rather premature end. Was that it? 50 grand? Somebody, oh, some, someone, someone's <laughs> being ripped off, huh? Someone's using the wrong card. As you've probably seen there, we just had a major disappointment with the fireworks. I'm not sure exactly what's happened, but we've, we've had a technical glitch. With the, uh, our French agency's telling me that the security people pulled it off because the wind was too high and they were, they were scared of Versailles. You like this shit? You like... <laughs> so, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty disappointed. Pretty pissed off with the fireworks. Richard! C'est pas mal pour 50k. Richard! <laughs> I've never served 357 covers as quick as that in my entire life. Um, factory orientated and uh, a big eye opener. I mean, we've learned. We've learned a hell of a lot from it. Never to do the fucking thing again. <laughs> Sod the money. <laughs> think, <laughs> think about your standards. <laughs> I just heard a big yeah. splash in the back there. Yeah. It sounds like Richard Waddington just jumped <laughs> into the pond. <laughs> but, but to do Still looking for that firework, man. Next week, the fireworks are in the kitchen. The three-month wait is over, and Ramsey discovers if he's the youngest ever winner of three Michelin stars. It's a Monday's D-Day, isn't it? It's like winning an Oscar, I would imagine. Yeah. Fucking hell, suppose they don't come round. It'll be huge if he gets it. This is crazy. It's like a, it's like a disease. I mean, we've come up. It's, it's, it's a mad 48 hours. <laughs>